test, test. <clears throat> hey, what's up, tribe? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the TFC Audio Project Down Under. This week, I'm joined by Khan Sandy, who is a movement and martial arts coach based out of Hybrid Training Center in Hobart, which was the location for our workshop and seminar over the weekend. Throughout the conversation, we delve into Khan's background in martial arts and how it led him to the broader movement culture, the concept of hybrid training and why it's so important to practice different modalities, the value of martial arts training for physical and mental health, and how learning to fight actually makes you less likely to get in one. This week's episode is brought to you by TFC Events. We've just finished the first league of our tour in Hobart and our first ever ground up seminar, which was a heap of fun. We're now off to Adelaide for another workshop and seminar this coming weekend. There are still tickets left to the Feet Balance and Play workshop on Saturday, June 5 in Adelaide. And after that, we will be heading to Perth. And there are still some tickets available for both of those events, a seminar and workshop that weekend. Now, if you live in Queensland, Victoria or New South Wales, though, fear not. We will be heading back to major cities in your states later this year. You can head to our website, tfc-shopaus.com and click the tribe link at the top of the page to sign up for our newsletter to be the first to know when dates are announced for that tour. All right, so Khan, thanks for coming on the podcast, mate. No worries, man. Um, so you're actually the reason we're down here in Hobart. We're, yeah, yeah. We're, we're sitting on the mats in your epic gym down here. We just had the seminar yesterday, the ground up seminar, and it was just the perfect spot for it. And then we've got our feet balance and play workshop later on today. Um, so I thought we could just start by you telling us a bit about uh, HTC, which is the gym here and like what you guys are doing here, what your vision is with it, um, and then also why, I guess, why you're keen to get us down and why you're keen to get people in, like external people in to, to run workshops and those kinds of things. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, thanks so much for coming down too. It's, um, it's really good to have such an awesome um, company come down to Tassie and just share awesome information. Um, yesterday was epic. I really loved it. So oh, that's good. Yeah, it's our pleasure. I really like the vibe down here. I was saying to you before, Hobart would probably be the other city I could live in if it wasn't so cold. Yeah, yeah. I do enjoy the weather up in Brisbane, but yeah. um, I do like the vibe of Hobart is epic. So yeah. yeah, and you guys are like right in the right in the center of it all, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Hey, yeah, such a good location. Yeah. So um, we're a hybrid training center. We uh, offer a few different services like yoga. Um, we do kind of like a, mo- a movement class, which is just um, we call it primal movement, um, strength and conditioning, which is a combination of CrossFit, but also training um, people in different planes of movement as well. So not just focusing on the sagittal plane, we like to go do a bit of twisting and frontal plane side to side stuff. Um, and then obviously the martial arts is a, is a massive aspect of it. It's actually, uh, it's been established as a business for quite a while. Um, and that's where I did martial arts with uh, my old man when I was pretty young, around three years old I started. Um, but when I was, I think I was like 12 or 13, I started training at HTC. Really? Um, and back then the owner, uh, Priscus Foganolio, he's like all of our coach essentially. Um, he owned the gym and uh, it was just purely martial arts out of like another gym, which was just like a weight training gym. Um, and it's where I met Chris, um, and a bunch of the boys that are still here now. After a while, everyone kind of spread out. So a few of the boys went to Sydney to train and um, kind of just, we kind of just moved apart a little bit um, and the gym kind of went up and down. And then Jeremy, one of the other owners bought it. Um, and then long story short, we've all come back. So some of the OGs are ah, back coaching and uh, Chris moved to Sydney, he came down. So yeah, we, it's a new company format now, but we've just kind of put it back up. Um, a lot of the old members are coming back and um, yeah, it's really good to see just like, in particular Tassie martial arts, just having a bit more pref- professionalism and like anyone that walks off the street can come and do martial arts, it doesn't have to worry about getting hit in the head and. All yeah, the, all the stuff that comes with martial arts. Yeah, for sure. So, are there a lot of other martial art gyms around? There's or? actually a few. Yeah. Yeah. Funnily enough, a lot of them have stemmed from HTC, uh, like old people members. And, there. Yeah, yeah. Opened up their own place. So, um, but we're we're trying to we, us in particular HTC, but definitely the other gyms. We're trying to boost um, martial arts in Tassie for sure. Because yeah, 
it's pretty big on the mainland, but back down here we've kind of always been behind. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, a big value for us here is just growth. We're, we're always trying to learn new things and connect with other people and um, connect with other gyms as well. And so uh, when we started, I kind of made it a plan to just get lots of people come down learn new things educate ourselves and just boost the whole industry the strength and conditioning industry and in particular the uh the martial arts industry as well yeah and you guys have just moved to, to this new facility hey over the last year yeah. or it was in COVID six that you months moved? six months all yeah. oh, right yeah so yeah. we've been open six months we we basically uh built and set it all up during COVID so it was um it was pretty sketchy and <laughs> at times a little bit like nerve-wracking but yeah we pulled through in the end and it's it's all paying off now. So yeah. is it a much bigger facility? Like, what was the last one smaller, or is it just yeah? yeah. So original, like I think we've had four locations now. This being the fourth, but the first one, like I said, was just in another gym, and it was just like probably five by six square meters, just some matting area where right. everyone trained. And then it moved to um, another place in town, which was like an old church, which was like two stories, but pretty small as well. Yeah. And then it moved out to Glenorchy. So a bit further out, that was a pretty big space, like a big warehouse, but, um, it's just, it was pretty far away from, from everything. So yeah. Do you feel, back. you feel pretty settled here? Like, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Cause it's a, it's a really cool, like I wish we should, I almost need a video walkthrough, but it's yeah, like yeah. upstairs area with big mats and a, um, like a, ring and a strength and conditioning section and then downstairs in the sort of dungeon with the jiu-jitsu area yeah, which yeah. we were at for the seminar yesterday and then we're moving up here today for the workshop but um it's and you've got uh like a recovery area with a sauna as yeah, well exactly. yeah exactly yeah yeah it's kitted out yeah i was saying i've been i mean i've been saying it the whole weekend but this is exact kind of place i would want to train yes. if it was up in brisbane so i'll have to yeah. maybe maybe you can have one of your dudes like yeah if anyone yeah, yeah. moves up to brisbane Branch they can out. start one yeah <laughs> is that is there a is there a plan to do that at all to like expand into different locate like to open other locations or yeah there's a few ideas um first of all we just want to get like our membership base pretty solid here we're like roughly around 200 at the moment um get that up hopefully around 250 maybe 300 um and that'll be that'll be sick and then potentially we we want to start like a promotion down here like a fight promotion uh, okay there yeah. was one but um there's not one in hobart there's a there's a a group of guys that do one up in Lonnie, which is um pretty sick. They're they're legends, but um yeah, one in Hobart would really, be really good. So then we've just got a pathway for our athletes as well. We've got a bunch of people competing, so having something to compete down here and then go to the mainland rather than just going straight to the mainland, hoping yeah. for the best. Best, yeah. Yeah, and you compete as well, hey? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So um I went pro as a MMA fighter about six years ago, so I was pretty young. Um, and then I had a series of injuries, so I've been pretty inactive. I just fought for a uh, Australian title uh, a couple of months ago, but first fight back after five years, and I was doing well in the first round, but then got clipped in the second round. Yeah, right. Yeah. And so you mentioned you've been training since you were three-ish in martial arts. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll come. We should chat about the injuries as well. But uh, how old are you now? So how how many years of training is that? Twenty-five. Yeah. 20, okay. Twenty-five now. Yeah. yeah. Right. So you'd know a thing or two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like a, it's almost like walking for me now. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I imagine it gets very, very second nature. Yeah. And yeah. Um, what's been, like, what's been your favorite part of training? Like, I, I mean, I've only trained in, well, I did like a, I mean, a bit of, what was it? Like, I've done very dabbled in, um, very dabbled. <laughs> I've dabbled in, like, oh, what was it? No, like, um jiu-jitsu and aikido uh, as in like japanese jiu-jitsu aikido and boxing when i was young um growing up just trying a bunch of different things yeah awesome. and um then more recently over the last couple of years i did i've done a total about a year of brazilian jiu-jitsu which i which i really loved and yeah and i guess i found that a lot more uh, a lot more practical or it just resonated a lot more with me in terms of i guess non-violent control in a sense yeah, like yeah, people yeah. think of martial arts a lot as as violence but jujitsu i guess it's known as the gentle art so it's can be quite rough as well obviously but yeah. in terms of not actually re you can you can sort of choose how much you want to hurt someone but most of it's about control and and submission yeah um which i found really awesome and i'm keen to like we were saying i'm keen to get back into it when i um get back into brisbane and once this uh, foot gets better, um, yeah, which yeah. it's definitely on the way now. Um, 
But what's been your favorite part of training or, I mean, it could be your favorite art or your favorite part of the mixed martial arts aspect or, and or um, like what you've gotten from training in martial arts, like what kind of value you've gotten from that? Yeah, yeah. That's an awesome question. Um, well, martial arts, I kind of like to look at, it, look at it as like my mentor in a way. Um, just because it's been a part of my, uh, such a big part of my life for such a long time, it's just led me down all of the best paths in my life. So, like I've, I've met my best friends through mm. martial arts. Um, I now own a business because of martial arts. Um, I met some of my other great mentors through martial arts as well. Um, and it's always just kind of guided me. It's kept me out of trouble when I was a bit younger and just gave me something to always fall back to. Obviously, the, um, the values that come with martial arts, like respect and discipline and um, persistence and things like that have really helped me through life for sure as well. Um, but yeah, I guess that's probably my favourite part of it is just like the opportunities that have come from it. It, it kind of exposed me to the whole movement culture as well. Mm, um, mm. I kind of heard about Ida Portal when he was doing stuff with Conor McGregor. Oh, yeah. And so I kind of delved down into Ido and just like the stuff that he was showing and it was pretty fascinating and then went and did one of his courses, uh, I think it was in Sydney with my mum actually. Um, and then that just like was another path for me with the, with the movement side of things. Um, and now I'm a, a personal trainer slash strength conditioning coach as well. Um, that was what I was doing for work for the last kind of five years. And like, I only fell down into that path because of martial arts. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the, there's just like, especially if you find the, the right people, obviously any modality of training or um, exercise, I guess, has some like bad people. It just it kind of oh, yeah. comes with it. But like, if you find the good, the right people, or people in particular, I think we we're talking about yesterday that just don't have much of an ego with martial arts. They're just usually pretty humble, pretty... Um, cool people to, to hang around with sure that's what i've found like you'd i think maybe a lot of people might who haven't delved into martial arts might have this idea of it as like aggressive angry men you know yeah. wrestling each other and hitting each other and all that and yeah, yeah. you walk into a martial arts gym and it's, it's usually the nicest people you'll ever meet yeah <laughs> well sure. like just really good people who are yeah and like you said there are maybe some gyms that have a bit more of an ego culture yeah that you know people want to prove themselves and things like that but generally you'll find especially for the people who've been doing it for a while um they have almost their ego is a lot less because there's always someone better than you and you yeah. can you can yeah, get yeah. humbled very quickly in martial arts definitely <laughs> like definitely. I, when i went started getting into brazilian jiu-jitsu you sort of i think in, before you actually experience it, you're like, oh, yeah, I could probably handle myself, maybe. You know, like I could, I'm, I'm fairly strong, I'm mobile, you know, like I could probably wrestle someone. Yeah. And then you start wrestling someone who's even been doing it for like six months or, you know, let alone someone who's been doing it for years. And you're like, oh, okay, actually, I, I would be completely, I'm completely inept. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And you just start off, you're like a baby, yeah. you just get tossed around. And yeah. then, um, and then you learn pretty quick. Like I think, what you were saying before about the movement, like being uh, exposed to the movement culture through martial arts. Martial arts, I guess in, in, some, in some sense is like the original movement culture in, yeah, yeah, in, yeah. A, in a big way because you have to be so strong, so mobile, so stable, so coordinated yeah. in all of these different ways. And, and if you're not then your weaknesses are exposed very quickly by yeah. someone who is better than you <laughs> yeah yeah and absolutely. it's it's not only are they exposed but they're exposed in a way that is very confronting and you're like oh i if this was a real situation i'd be i could be dead right now <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> and so you learn quick yeah um i find and i think it goes both ways like you the i've i've found i picked up jujitsu quite quickly because I'd been exposed to movement culture before and I'd done a lot of ground movement, a lot of sort of strength training and this and that. And so I was fairly coordinated and fairly stable, but, you know, still, still obviously had heaps to learn and still do have heaps to learn. But also if you've been exposed to martial arts, then yeah, it lends itself very well to then getting into the movement culture. Yep. And I guess that makes a lot of sense considering the whole model with hybrid training center like you said it's a mixture of it's not just martial arts because yes training martial arts is good 
but then you might miss out on certain areas of weakness like your strength or your conditioning obviously yeah. strength and conditioning matter a lot for all sports but probably especially martial arts um and then you know mixing in some yoga to sort of i guess the other the other side of the coin like a bit more restorative slow um meditative kind of stuff absolutely yeah the mindset part is uh, is like a big part that's often missed i think in in martial arts like we'll i think we we're saying yesterday just like how jiu-jitsu is like a game of chess yeah and it really is like the the best guys like our coaches and even their mentors that are helping them they always talk about being five steps ahead so like when you when you're rolling you're always thinking i'm going to do like a move that will set something else up and then depending on their reaction hopefully you've already got three steps that you can then go after their their reaction yeah um and then like a big part for our athletes um that's why we were really keen on the on the the yoga side of things because just being able to meditate be calm obviously when you're about to fight in a cage for like say mma for instance it's pretty confronting it's pretty um there's a lot of thoughts going on in your mind i bet so there's a guy standing <laughs> behind uh, the opposite of you that's like wants to do anything they can to just either knock you out or like you know it's it's pretty it's pretty primal um and if you can't control your mind and how you think in that situation it's it's not going to be a good time yeah it'd be so mental hey because if you yeah. get in your own head and you're not fully present or you're just like too worried about what he's going to do then you're not actually you're not going to perform your best and yeah then, and exactly. then you find out pretty quick yeah that's why i really liked yesterday just we do a little bit of breath work like the wim hof stuff that yeah you kind of mentioned yesterday but um yeah just some breathing breathing and learning to just like be calm learning to control your thoughts especially like i do a bit of um coaching with some of the athletes and just like w when you're going through a fight camp the the training side of things the physical side of things is quite quite easy you come to training you train hard we work on a game plan but then the mental side of things is something that's like i think it's it's definitely becoming a new component to being a top ath athlete in martial arts obviously other sports already have a component mm -hmm. of that and mm -hmm. they, they work on it but um with martial arts it's kind of like you think martial artists are tough they don't need to work on that but it's it's almost the biggest thing because you can be ready and this was for me in particular with some of my first fights i was always ready physically I'd, I'd train harder than anyone in the gym for sure but the mental side of things it was just like it was like a roller coaster or so up and down unsure of myself or just like you know you could easily just allow your thoughts to take control of your mind and you'd be all, all of a sudden thinking of what if what if like I get knocked out? What if I lose? Like what are other people gonna think of me? And they're just not not good constructive thoughts to have when you're gonna be competing in a cage, you know. For sure. So being able to control that is a something that we're really trying to work on here as well. Yeah, and that, that breath work stuff, there's a lot of science behind it, but also just practically experience wise using it's like it's very simple to just use breath timing to physiologically influence your mind so yeah, the, the breath is we talked about it yesterday it's basically the the bridge between your autonomic nervous system and your voluntary nervous system like mm. your, your conscious and your subconscious and you can the breath is really the only part of your autonomic nervous system that you can consciously influence i mean obviously there are people who are like extreme meditators who can like Wim Hof for instance and and I know even he uses breath, obviously, it's a huge part of his system, but there are people who can just tap into their mind and change what their autonomic subconscious nervous system is doing. But the breath for, for everyone is a very accessible way to go, okay, well, I'm in this mental state and I want to bring it back into a different mental state. And so the only way you can really do that consciously is through breath and there's different yeah, breath yep. timings that, you know, if you emphasize your inhales, then you get more fight or flight and if you em emphasize your exhales then you get more parasympathetic rest and digest and um, you know this isn't this isn't just for fighters it's for you know trying to get to sleep at night if your mind is you yeah, know going absolutely. wild or you know any any kind of situation where you want to put yourself in a different state then the breath is that is that key and I found heaps of times especially I mean I was fortunate enough to come across meditation and breath work and things like that years and years ago but before that 
I'd be lying in bed and my mind's thinking about something and I'm just like, oh, I just can't sleep. Like, yeah, damn, yeah, yeah, I just yeah. can't sleep. This sucks. And you get even more in your mind because like, I need to sleep. God, just let me sleep. But then yeah. e- ever since, if that's happening and I'm lying there awake, then I'm like, oh, this is a perfect opportunity to tune into my breath yeah. and f- focus on only the breath. And then next minute I'm asleep in five or 10 minutes and, and yeah. I wake up. And I'm like, oh, that worked. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, a couple of little te- technical difficulties there, um, but you were just telling us about the podcast that you were listening to. Yep, um, yeah, so the podcast was basically about mindset, how we control our thoughts, um, and he was saying that basically, just giving the, uh, the example of when we've got a song stuck in our head and um, just that, that annoying feeling of like, you can't get it out, um, that song just keeps coming back, but then saying that, if you can't just control and just switch it off and just be like control your own mind and think about something else, then technically you're not in control of your own thoughts. Um, and that, that really hit home for me because that was something that always happened to me. I get a song stuck in my head and I just like, Oh God, it's so annoying that I can't get this song out. Especially if it was an annoying song as well, which is common because my girlfriend would always <laughs> sing annoying songs. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, that, that kind of, that like led me to kind of start researching a little more about our, our, our thoughts and our mind and stuff like that. And then I, I started listening to a lot of books on audio audible. Oh yeah. I, I used to audible. be, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I used to listen to a lot of podcasts, but then found audible and um, got really interested in all things, health and fitness, but in particular psychology mm. and just how our thoughts do control our reality. Essentially. Um, I think one of the, one of the, few really good ones one by frederick nietzsche um oh yeah i haven't read him but i've been recommended it by many people. yeah yeah and i think it's it's called as a man thinketh or as a man thinketh that rings a bell maybe yeah um but anyway yeah uh it's it's pretty incredible when we start using our mind and just like controlling our thoughts and just being aware of how we react in certain certain situations and yeah it's made a big difference to um to helping our athletes I, I use it coaching my my clients as well but in particular just me my own my own life and what happens in my own life mm, mm. and the uh, i guess what we were saying before i think before <laughs> before the audio cut out yeah yeah uh was that it's cool how that comparison or um i guess the flow over from something like martial arts into your everyday life yeah yeah can be really huge because that there's that saying that everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. Yeah. And I think we were just saying before, we couldn't remember who said it. I, I get the feeling it was Mike Tyson, but I could be making that up. Yeah. Someone can correct me. Um, but the idea is that, like, obviously in the ring, you know, you might have, like you said, you might have f- prepared really well physically. You might be the fittest athlete. You might be the strongest athlete or whatever. Um, but if you then get in the ring and you get punched in the face and you lose all your performance then it doesn't matter f- for for shit basically yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> you just, exactly you get punched in the face you and and similarly in life you can you can get punched in the face by life sometimes and and go like for me it was kind of a punch in the foot or, <laughs> a punch or whatever <laughs> but like stepping on a stick that impaled my foot and then turns out there was still a pretty good chunk of stick yeah. in there yeah, that yeah. i just pulled out this morning um <laughs> And I'm the foot guy <laughs> and like I run foot workshops and, and all of this and like my foot's my money maker. It probably would have been easy to be like, oh my God, I'm ruined. My, my foot is ruined or whatever. Yeah. Um, and similarly, like anything might happen, like a business complication or, you know, your health suffers in some way or someone in your family is going through a tough time and life is proverbially punching you in the face. Yeah. And if you've got all these plans... And you don't know, you can't pivot um, when you do get punched in the face, then everything does turn to shit or, excuse my language, but, um, or if you can roll with that punch and, and be like, okay, how do I avoid that in the, in the future? Because I really don't want that to happen again. Is there anything I can do to control what's going on here? Um, and it's that difference between um, like a fixed mindset versus a growth mindset or like a, a victim mindset yeah, versus absolutely. a growth mindset. Yeah. So I'm just interested by your experience with that both in the ring and in life if you've had um 
times where you just had to roll with the punches, obviously yep. in the ring. Um, but like, what's that? What that is like, and or if you've had times where you did get punched in the face and you you lost your plan. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Well, that's definitely a big part of the the prep for a fight is the the visualization and. Um, just practicing meditation. We always kind of talk about meditation as just like you're training your, your mind. You're training your mind to be more relaxed, more focused, more logical rather than reactional. Um, it's like when we're, when we're training punches or like if you're doing bicep curls, you're training your bicep, training your punch. Same kind of thing. Meditation is just training the mind. Um, the visualization side of things that we do is we'll kind of visualize all of the good outcomes, the bad outcomes, the walkout. Um, in particular, just parts of the fight that you might not really think about. So then when the night comes, when the fight's about to happen, rather than just being like, oh, it's all new, there's heaps of new stimulus happening, the brain's a bit like overloaded with like the, the situation that's going down, um, we try and visualize the, the walkout, getting your hands wrapped, warming up, like literally everything so that when it happens, it's, it's kind of like you've already been there. Mm -hmm. You can mm -hmm. then get in the ring and then if you visualize both good and bad, bad being important as well and overcoming obstacles within the fight, um, then when they do happen, it's easier to pick yourself back up and just like get back on with the game plan or overcome like, you know, getting taken down, getting back up or getting punched, kicked a few times. Maybe it was like a pretty good shot and it hurt. Um, but then just the more you visualized overcoming that situation, the easier it is when you're actually in there. Um, fights are very, very fast. They're, they're quick. Everything's happening at super speed and you don't mm. really have time to think. So all of the thinking should be done before the actual competition, before the fight, so that when we get in there, it's just reactional. Um, it's easy to overcome things. It's easy to stick to the game plan. And it does make a huge difference. One of my first uh, fights when I was pretty young, I think I was 16 or 17 and I was fighting, it was a Muay Thai fight. Um, so just kickboxing, knees, elbows. Mm. Um, and I was fighting an adult and didn't really prep mentally. I was super, super fit. Um, obviously been doing martial arts for a long time, both Muay Thai and karate. Um, striking is kind of my background. And so physically I was absolutely ready, but mentally I did no prep, no meditation. Right. wasn't really aware of like visualization and all of that stuff. And so when the night came, like the fight came around, I was super nervous kind of that butterfly feeling in, in the tummy and just like unsure, uncertain. Not, not, I wasn't in a good mind frame. Definitely not for a fight anyway. Was this one of your first proper fights? Did you yeah, say? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it was like either my second or third. All right. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, just underprepared mentally. Um, when I was walking out or when I warmed up, actually, I was feeling pretty fatigued, pretty heavy. Walked out, feeling pretty heavy in my legs. Mm. I remember my dad being one of my main coaches as well he said that one of his first fights he just forgot everything and for some reason I almost like attached myself to that like like oh no what if I forget everything and yeah. when I got out there game plan went out the window I forgot like my corner was like throw a punch throw a jab and I like had to think what's a jab <laughs> but doing it thousands of times that should just it shouldn't have been something that happened in the in the actual competition in the fight um but that was obviously a great experience it was a good lesson you got to mm. be got to be ready mentally, um, otherwise, yeah, shit just goes out the window. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's it's like being as proactive as you possibly can be pre-fight, or yep. you know, like if we want to take it out to life as well, because not everyone's a fighter, but um, just being as proactive as you can be and visualizing the things that you want and visualizing the things that could go wrong and how you might handle that and meditating and controlling your thoughts as much as you can but then also training your body to react in ways that are favorable because yeah. if you just leave the body to its own devices it'll just react yeah in the way that it like isn't there a thing like the body's reaction to flinch like is the worst thing you can do in boxing yeah absolutely Be well, yeah because definitely. it's like well that's a natural reaction so oh if i just follow my natural reactions then you know my body will deal with it but yeah if you haven't trained your body, like, I guess there are, there's definitely natural reflexes and things like that. And a flinch is a reflex, but you can train your body to react differently to yep. stimulus. And I think that's, that's a, a big thing. Um, 
yeah, it seems like in boxing and life. I haven't really done much striking, but I'm, I'm fascinated by it and especially by all the footwork involved. Yeah. Because people think about boxing as like an upper body sport and just, you know, punching fists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. really the power comes from, I guess, the hips and the rotation of the hips, but then that comes from the position of your feet. So yeah. I have done a little bit um, of striking at the at the MMA gym that I was training jiu-jitsu at um, and just found that so fascinating for how how the movement of your feet on the ground is probably the biggest thing for either not getting hit and also being able to hit hard. Yeah, definitely. Well, well like an uh, analogy I like to give when I'm training people is like our feet and our footwork for striking in particular is like the foundation mm. of everything. So when you build a building, if the foundations are weak, the building's going to topple down. I do love that so, analogy. Yeah, yeah. Use that so, a lot. yeah. So it's, it's exactly like striking. Um, you look at some of the best boxers, in my opinion, Lomachenko being one of the best boxers um, ever. And his his uh, father got him into dancing when he was really young. Yeah, Didn't, that's right. I've heard, this, yeah. is, this is exactly what my coach told me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. like the way he moves is, it's phenomenal. Just like watching him box and just like, again, back to the, the jiu-jitsu analogy of putting yourself two, three steps ahead of your opponent. He's always doing that. He's putting himself in a better position than his opponent so that when they have to turn in or um, get their, their midline back facing him to, to get a, count, a shot off or a combo off, he's already in a better position. He's always like just slightly off to an angle or, yeah, it's, his, his front foot's in a better position than, than his opponent's. It's, it's awesome to see and, and to watch. Um, footwork's a massive thing that we do here. It's, yeah. it's really, really important. It's so cool. I really want to delve more into it um, as well. Like I, after, because I was training with Matt Rutley up there, who's okay, um, yep. at Stage Six Fitness. Well, he was there uh, pre-COVID, um, and yeah, really loved it there. And he, he was uh, had done. Mo- he was a high-level boxer growing up, yep, and yep. then he got into kickboxing and then into jiu-jitsu. Yes. Yeah, so. Um, so his big background was was boxing and. Um, first of all, what, when, you can, when you watch someone, especially in person, it, uh, somehow it doesn't come through as much in a video, but especially in person, when you watch someone move, then you can sort of get the sense of like, ooh, I would not want to be on his bad side. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, he yeah. just moves so gracefully and so fluidly. And when you watch him hit a bag, it's just like, oh, God. Like, it's, it's, it's cool. It's really cool to watch. And it's also confronting of like oh that's what movement can be like yeah. and how much power you can develop and um so that aspect's cool and then when he did tell me about you know all the stuff to do with footwork uh, in boxing and also that guy what was his name Lomachenko Lomachenko yeah, yeah and how his father got him to dancing and all that and I was like oh that's that's cool and so I started watching a bunch of YouTube videos on boxing footwork and, yeah, and yeah, started yeah. watching people uh, so it was that guy and there was also is it, it's a UFC fighter called Dominic someone. Dominic Cruz. Dominic Cruz, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I started watching some of these, those videos and just started watching the feet only. Yeah. <laughs> pretty yeah, much. Yeah, and yeah. obviously the whole thing. But I, like, I was really focusing on the feet. And it is just so fascinating how yeah. just quick movements of the foot allows then your body to be in a different position just enough to miss a, a sh- like a punch or whatever. And then it puts you also in a really good position to then counter. And exactly, it's, it's yeah. It's like... Dominic Cruz has key. a crazy style. It's yeah. Super yeah. unorthodox, but effective, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so now that, you, now that you've been doing it for so long and you've had such a big background in striking, do you still find you have to train footwork? Like I imagine there's always ways to get better or do, is it sort of more inbuilt now and natural and you're just working on other aspects? Yeah, I, I guess it's kind of that... I like to think of that philosophy of mastery in the sense that like mastery doesn't really ever exist, you know, like yeah. it's that ongoing process and generally like the way most things I've found in life work is the more you learn, the more you realize you need to learn. Yeah. yeah. It's just that ongoing um, approach to things and you can break down, I think you were saying like running, you could do like a seven day workshop and still not even really scratch yeah. the surface um, of running mechanics, but like definitely striking is the same like we for the pro team when we do our, our training every day we start off with footwork every session and like you'll you'll get good at something and then you practice it practice it and then you realize like you're not even that good at it you have to practice it again and there's more finer details to make it more effective and mm. um 
yeah, footwork's something that we start off with pretty much every session. Um, and like, I guess striking is one of those funny things in that it's just all about repetition, really. Like, like talking about reactions, you got to train something so many times for it to just be that that fourth stage of learning where it's just unconscious and it's just happening. It's just that reaction. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah Repetition's a huge thing. So like with our, our drilling and things, we're just repping, repping, repping. And we, we rep mostly the basics, just like basic defenses, things like if you break down a fight, you want to kind of train what happens most in a fight. So say for instance, a striking fight, it's probably going to be predominantly fakes. You're just faking a lot of the time, mm-hmm. gauging your range, great gauging like the react reactions of your opponents and things like that um just like uh training like jab defenses and just reactions off a jab or kick defenses and just like that basic stuff and then you get into more of the detail um down the track but i guess it, it can become a little bit tedious at times striking because to be a really good striker you just have to practice the basics over mm. and over and over again but like my best friend Chris, who's uh, one of our main striking coaches, he always says that in order to get really good at anything, you got to fall in love with those finer details of just mastering the basics. Yeah. And I, f- I found, I think it was a, pretty sure it was a jiu-jitsu guy I was rolling with, but he was just like saying that all top level guys at almost anything they do, they're just masters at the basics. They're mm. really, really good at, at mm. the basic things. So that all of the complicated, more technical stuff just becomes a little easier. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's huge. And again, heaps of parallels over to everything else. Yeah. Um, and like, that's why we're pretty... Like, I, I think I was really stoked to get the ground up seminar going because I can't... Like, with movement health especially, it is really about mastering or at least being very aware and taking action on all of the fundamentals of movement health. And there, there are yeah. a lot, like we covered... Yesterday we covered breath and core, um, ground movement, ground living, feet, balance, and then walking and running. And like I said, it, yeah, each one could be a full day seminar or probably yep. a two day, three day, four day seminar in itself and or six month mentorship. You know, like yeah, you can yeah, go yeah. as deep as you want into each of those topics. But we find that because most of those things aren't even on people's radar, they don't, they don't think about their breath they don't think about their feet they don't think about moving on the ground they don't, you know so they don't really need a, a full full in-depth experience of that one thing they need a broad understanding of how they all work together yeah to to form like the like a, a really good foundation of movement health and um yeah i think i think that's a really cool again all i love the uh the analogies between martial arts and life but um yeah for sure the the other thing I was really interested in and, and um, really resonated with me in, in jiu-jitsu especially was just the importance of having a strong base as a, as a foundation because um, like the, I guess the worst thing that can happen, I would imagine... It, well, the whole idea with fighting and martial arts and jiu-jitsu is getting the other person off balance really hey like if you're knocking them out you're definitely getting them off balance yeah but yeah, if, yeah. if you're not main and that's where the footwork comes in in boxing is maintaining a stable base so that you're then in a good position to either defend or attack yeah and the yeah. same thing obviously with jiu-jitsu except it's just mostly on the ground yeah, yeah. and being able to quickly change your base in response to what someone else is doing or to be like okay my base is off um and they're taking advantage of that and then figuring out a way to to reverse that situation um which yeah like you said is is a bit of a game of human chess yeah (laughs) um and with jiu-jitsu how long have you been doing jiu-jitsu um probably bit over 12 years oh yeah. right yeah. yeah yeah true so so um do you coach it as well uh no no no, yeah, no yeah, here, yeah. Yeah. um but yeah that like you said just understanding first of all it's it is there's like position before submission which is something that i always got told like people really want to go for submissions as much as possible and you know go for the win and so on but if you're not in a good position you're pretty much never going to get a submission yeah um 
and then the other person's just if they're in a better position, you try and go for a submission and suddenly you're in a submission. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's a, yeah, it's a fascinating game. And I highly recommend anyone to, to get, in, get into it, at least just get exposed to it. And, and you know, if you, you'll generally find that most jiu-jitsu gyms are very, or martial arts gyms are very approachable and welcoming and, you know, will do a good job. There might, like you said, there might be a few out there that are a bit, bit more egoic and a bit harder to to resonate with possibly but it's always worth checking out other ones because there really is i reckon there's nothing more empowering than knowing how to i think knowing how to defend yourself knowing that you could have at least you, you could at least have a, a a chance or you could at least defend yourself in an emergency situation like yeah. no one thinks an emergency situation is going to happen to them until it does happen yeah to them. yeah exactly. and then they're like oh, i wish i like knew what to do in that emergency situation yeah and yeah. that goes for like a fight or you know having to run run away from someone even or like um run and save someone or climb something to get out of a burn, burning building or something like that and it's a bit of a luxury that people don't have to tr- well, they, they seemingly don't have to train for those kinds of things anymore. But for the longest time, our body, like in order to survive in a natural environment, we needed to be ready for those kinds of things. Yeah, absolutely. Have you found in your life that has there been times where either you have had to defend yourself physically or whether having the training in martial arts gave you the confidence to be able to defuse a situation uh, without it getting physical? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I guess that's kind of a... That's a rabbit hole for me. <laughs> let's let's delve yeah. into the rabbit hole a bit. <laughs> um, that's like, yeah, such a big part of my life. Just martial arts and like we've kind of been touching on it, but just how it how it relates to life in general um, and just the, the values from from martial arts and, and, and so on. But one of my other businesses, it's mostly just a PT business and just like mine and my partner's philosophy on life. Um, it's mm. called Monkey Motion. Yeah, I wanted to ask about this. Yeah, and... Um, it's kind of the monkey side of things basically stands for getting back to our, our primal way of living. And a big part of that, I believe, is is fighting. It's one of the oldest sports and like longest forms of play plus competition we've ever done. Yeah. Um, and so the monkey side of things is just bringing in primal living into life now. And then the motion is understanding that we are evolving and we are where we are right now our culture is you know it's evolved and we have a society now and um that's an important part of it so like the monkey motion philosophy is just bringing back primal living but still using kind of futuristic um evolutionary things into life as well um and i think the reason why we love hdc so much and um why we think it's such a powerful tool to help people is martial arts being just a way to show people that they can be confident um teaching them respect discipline things that are absolutely crucial in life um we've found like for myself and the the group of people that i can hang out with the most martial arts has helped us all in so many ways um you kind of talked about like that that ego as well and just like martial arts will dissolve the ego in like Mm -hmm. so many ways which is super super important um and just like i talk about self-confidence a fair bit and just like you know you have to be self-confident in yourself in business in life in relationships um and martial arts is just a great way to practice that for me it's like a practice in in many ways like we're, we're obviously learning to fight but for a lot of people that come in here i wanted to offer martial arts to people so that they didn't have to fight they could come in and they could hit pads or learn that they, they can punch and just like get out some built up emotion and anger and stuff as well. Like you'll see, not to pick a demographic, but like just like middle-aged women come in and do pads and then they almost get emotional and just afterwards they're buzzing with energy and just excitement and just like they look, they have this aura around them after they've just like punched some stuff and then they just feel so much better. It does feel good. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And then like jujitsu as well, like... Um, I've got some of my old clients into jiu-jitsu now and like um, one in particular being just a lawyer and he said it was just so confronting just like being choked, choking people 
and now he's just obsessed with it. He loves yeah. it. And he's yeah. like, he lives here basically. So yeah. it's it's just it's a like like your philosophy, I guess, as the Foot Collective. It's movement and exercise is like all forms are good. Um, and I liked what you said yesterday. Like context really matters with everything that you're doing. Um, but like play and then just martial arts where you're playing with other people or when you're moving and exercising with just a bit more play involved and it's not just like picking things up putting them back down constantly um is such a good way to keep you involved keep you coming back for more Mm. like you've got more things to learn so it's there's more growth and um growth growth involved and yeah yeah i think we really want to like offer martial arts to just general public because it's made a big difference for us so hopefully it can make a big difference to others as well for sure there was a couple of things that you mentioned in there and one i want to emphasize is yeah the the carryover between just well the whole concept i suppose of returning back to our sort of more natural primal roots so for us it's starting at the feet like stop wearing shoes that don't let your feet work like feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is so, so simple. And a lot of people resonated with, with it, but there's still so much work to do to, I guess, convince the public yep. <laughs> or the, the general public or society as a whole. Um, but then like what you said is really, and, and also what we develop and teach and, and, and promote is really hitting all those fundamentals of natural movement health and trying to trying to explore as much movement that would that we would actually have to do in nature and yeah, in one yeah. sense martial arts i get yeah you wouldn't necessarily think of say jujitsu or boxing as like a natural movement per se but yeah, that yeah. that capacity to express um you know, I want to I want to say violence, but the, yeah, the capacity to express violence and building that capacity, but then also having the respect for it and the dis- discipline to not use that as your first resource, like to 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 actually engage in it as a practice is your probably probably the best way to avoid it in real life. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I think you actually asked that before, and like, it's funny in the sense that if you've got this like if in particular martial artists as as like a kind of a general rule people that have done martial arts when they they're confronted with someone in in the streets say someone's trying to start an argument or start a fight for the sake of starting a fight generally if you've done martial arts you've just got this aura of confidence around you that people kind of go and back off and then it just doesn't happen mm. i always say the best fight on the streets is one that's avoided yeah. yeah and martial artists are good at that because they can avoid them with confidence and it's like when there's that confrontation out on the streets there's kind of a, i guess a prim- a primitive thing that's happening and someone who's trying to initiate the fight can kind of sense if the person's confident or they're a little bit scared there's a lot of energetics that go on behind that definitely I yeah like for you sure you can just feel someone's energy yeah yeah and if you've yeah i just i've, I've always found that if I've found myself in that situation, just holding myself and holding confident, um, knowing that I can look after myself is the best way to avoid the, the situation altogether. And I suppose in, in, an, in another look at it, uh, I mean, obviously you can, you, like having experienced actual fights or like, you know, con- I guess controlled fights. I don't know if you've experienced actual street fights as well, but yeah. um, have you? Yeah, a couple. Okay, 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 yeah. Um, but having experienced fights, you know, first of all, you know what you could do to someone, which is kind of scary in itself and opens up all kinds of legal issues. And yes, So it's yeah. obviously, like you said, the best fight is the one that's avoided. Yep, 100%. Um, but you also know that anything can happen. <laughs> yeah. You know, like you yeah. might do something to someone or, you know, someone out might come out of the blue and punch you in the back of the head. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. And so you just, you have this respect for violence that you maybe otherwise wouldn't have if you just, you know, and I, I, like you said, I think you can be calmly confident if you've trained, whereas as opposed to the sort of boasty, loud confidence of like, what man, like what, you know, like that kind of confidence is actually more rooted in fear of like, you need to look, you need to look yeah. big, you need to like be loud and big so that someone goes away. Yeah. As opposed to like, hey man, it's all good. Like, I don't have an issue with you. Let's just walk away. Yeah. 
but oops, <laughs> but you say it with that level of calmness and confidence that they go, okay, let's walk away. Yeah, yeah. Rather than like, what? Push them. Yeah. And then they're like, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Um, so I, I mean, I've been fortunate. I haven't really been in any of those kinds of situations. I mean, maybe a couple of situations where, but it's probably just more my personality rather than a full confidence in my ability to fight. But my personality is just to defuse and avoid For things. For sure, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Whereas other people's personality might be the opposite. So yeah. I'm sure there's heaps of things that play into that, but I'm sure training in fighting um, and martial arts would be the best way to get that for sure you know like to yeah. actually yeah earn that right or earn that ability yeah yeah, yeah definitely yeah yeah 100 yeah, percent. well um that might be a good time to wrap it up actually because we are coming up to we need to start getting ready for this workshop yes yeah, um but maybe just tell people where they can find you on instagram um and whether there's any resources to check out and i guess where you are in hobart for anyone who's listening in hobart because I'd highly recommend coming and checking out the gym. Thanks, man. Um, but yeah, anything that you've got going on or want people to know about? Yeah, cool. So um, we're in Argyle Street, 121 Argyle Street. We're just pretty much next to Toy World. That's probably the... Um, yeah, the, the big close. yellow yeah, building. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, we offer basically a free week of training um, at the moment or generally it's just like 15 bucks and you get seven days, come try things out, um, see if you like it, see if it fits for you. Um, and then from there, we can look at signing you up. We've got Facebook and Instagram. Um, it's just Hybrid Training Center on Facebook. And then Instagram, if you search Hybrid Training Center, you'll, it'll come up or it's just HTC underscore MMA. Um, we've got a website, um, hybridtrainingcenter.com.au as well. Um, we've got lots of plans to, uh, to grow and expand and um, get bigger, whatever that kind of looks like in the future. Probably definitely a promotion. Um, but lots of workshops, lots of growth, lots of education. So hopefully we'll get you guys back down again soon. And, yeah, um, man, we're really keen. We're, yeah, we're, we're really keen. keen to be back. Um, and then hopefully by then, well, my foot will definitely be better after gouging that stick yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I will have trained, get, got back into some training, yeah. and your injury will be all better. We didn't delve into the injury side of things today, yeah. but yeah. Um, maybe we can have a role next time and then um, also do a follow-up podcast and just talk about injury recovery and all those kinds of things yeah, when see. it comes to martial arts. Awesome. Um, yeah, but that'll be awesome. Cool. Looking forward to it. Thanks so all much, right. brother. Thanks, man. Cheers, guys. Cheers.